Hello everybody and welcome along to the Traction Channel, where today I will be conducting an experiment, kind of. This video is all about a couple of racing games that all too often fall under the radar, these being Ryza Studios Automobilista and Automobilista 2. When the original Automobilista came out in 2016, it utilised the same game engine as the original R-Factor, this being ISI Motor 2.0. An updated version of this, called ISI Motor 2.5, was then used for R-Factor 2. For Automobilista 2, however, Ryza struck a new technical partnership with the developers of the Project Cars franchise, with an announcement on the 24th of May 2019 stating the following. Automobilista 2 is built on the Madness engine, providing incredible graphical quality, the most advanced dynamic weather and track condition systems in a racing simulator, and superior VR support, to deliver a substantial realism upgrade and a fully immersive visual experience. The game engine is a crucial piece in the makeup of any racing title, especially those vying for sim status. It builds the foundations for the major and important aspects of the gameplay, such as physics and the graphics. The ISI motor was always widely praised for its physics and handling, but less so its visual capabilities, whilst the general feeling towards the Madness engine were the exact opposite. Ryza Studios were known for their attention to detail as developers, and many believed this move would work brilliantly, as the Madness engine would improve the visual aspects of the game, whilst Ryza would be capable of tweaking and improving the way the cars felt to drive. And that brings me to the point of this video. Has the change from ISI Motor to Madness worked? Is Automobilista 2 a better game than the original? Is it worse? So many questions, so little time, so let's get on with it. The best place to begin would be the original Automobilista, and it gets off to a bit of a shaky start. You can feel the ghosts of the original R-Factor in the user interface from the get-go. Everything just feels a little laboured and a bit clunky. The menus are slow and old-fashioned, whilst the button layouts and icons leave you guessing quite a bit as to what they actually do. It's certainly not the worst I've come across, but isn't super intuitive. A bit like R-Factor with a plastic face mask bought from a pound store. It's not really hiding anything, let's be honest. I should also mention that the game crashed on me a couple of times to begin with as well, contributing to that dated feeling. Moving on to the gameplay itself, I decided to jump in one of the Brazilian stock cars in time trial mode and see what it was all about. From the moment I clicked drive, I instantly felt connected to both the car and the road. It gave me immediate feedback and confidence in what was happening. The steering feels nice and heavy, it's very weighty. It makes the car feel more alive, you can feel every little bump more, and it's, I'm having to wrestle it around the track rather than floating around, which is always good. Slightly beginning to get a feeling for this now, and uh, yeah, it feels really nice to be honest. There were only two real issues off the bat, one of which was the inconsistency of the curbs. Some of them gave me all the grip I needed, whilst others tended to throw the car into a spin with no chance of saving it, even when the curb appeared to be flat and harmless. The second issue was the steering lock and steering rotation. I'm slightly struggling with the lack of steering angle I'm getting, so I might need to make some adjustments. The rotation matches my wheel properly, but it just feels like the car should be turning more than it actually is relative to the steering wheel input. Just when it understeers, you can't really turn to get the nose back in. So I jumped into my wheel profiler and changed the degrees of rotation. This still didn't fix the problem, but I eventually discovered that the issue lay within the default car setup in the game. A few adjustments later and I had the car feeling far more natural, but the fact that I had to play around with it so much just to make it feel normal is not great. I feel like this could have been set differently within the default setup. Okay, I've adjusted the steering ratio and the rotation and it actually feels a lot more lively. It kind of matches what I'm doing a bit better. I continued to push on and the lap times got better and better, with the only real trouble coming from those slippery curbs. As soon as you touch that curb, I just tried it to see if it was any different, um, but yeah, you've got nothing on that curb, so you've got to be really, really careful with situations like that. It feels like a bit of a faff to get going, but once you get there, I think if you were to work on a kind of qualifying setup and stuff, it's really, really intuitive. It's just, as I say, that initial bit is a bit more tricky. As I continued to lap, I had a good think about the graphics and the sounds. It's fair to say that they stack up really well, even today. The graphics still have that sharpness and the recognisable textures found in any ISI motor-based game, but the quality was very high. I honestly thought it looked great. The sounds, on the other hand, are amongst the most detailed I've come across in a long, long time, and totally took me by surprise. The combination of these elements bring the game straight back up to modern standards, dragging the UI along on its heels behind. Back on track, and I was really starting to enjoy myself. I just loved how much the car was speaking to me through the wheel. It gave me buckets of confidence and allowed me to feel at home with the game, even after playing it for only a total of about 10 minutes. Okay, we're gonna get into the 103s here. I think that's pretty good, considering not really any setup work. Just a, you know, five or six laps to get up to speed, and it, it feels good. I spoke at just the wrong moment there because I touched that curve again, but yeah, I'm, I'm impressed. I'm very impressed on many different aspects as well. 
time to try something different, and instead of a modern sophisticated stock car, I went with a screaming mid-90s V12 Formula 1 car around a classic circuit, Montreal, kind of recreating a Lacey's 95 victory. I expected this car to really test the limits of the physics, allowing me to gauge just how detailed the driving mechanics are when you put them to the test. I set up my H-pattern shifter and headed for the circuit, only to find that yet again the default steering settings felt all wrong. This time I knew the fix, so it wasn't long before I was back out and in the groove. Again, the sounds were amazing, and the car felt raw and on edge as I'd expected. Oh no! <laughs> so with this car, there's so much power that you've actually got to be careful not to apply too much of it on corner exit. I had to change the steering lock and ratio to the maximum to make it as twitchy as possible, and even then it's still probably not far off perfect, so you've really got to spend a little bit of time getting that right before you get out there. Of course, these cars have so much less downforce than modern Formula 1 cars, so it is different to drive them. And it's so easy to just forget that you're in an old car because it looks you know, the same from the cockpit. So you just push on as if you're in a really high downforce single seater and it's not that high downforce. It wasn't crazy difficult to get around the circuit safely, but it was when I began to push the limits on braking and corner exit that the game began to bite back in all the right ways. Oh no! Yellow flag. Kept out the barriers. Oh no! World Champions, before it was the World Champions. Flag. The whole experience was, yet again, a positive one. It all felt really enjoyable and gave me the platform to push the limits of grip in a difficult car without feeling like it was too easy or overly difficult. Oh, almost Kevin Magnusoned it. It's actually tiring me out driving this car in this game, it's brilliant. 120.2. And I've gone straight on, locked up. Caution. After Heinz Harrell frenzing it off the circuit, I decided to move on before embarrassing myself any further. I wanted to find out how the game engine fares when it comes to the AI, which for those of you who are new to racing games, stands for Artificial Idiots. I went with some touring cars around the superb Cascavel circuit and left the AI settings on the default 105% difficulty and 80% aggression. This is my first chance at driving front wheel drive in this game, so we'll see how that handles it. I started with a 5 minute quali session to work out where I was going and was yet again impressed by the handling of the car. It had all the best characteristics of a front-wheel drive car without feeling like the traits had been exaggerated to an uncomfortable level, which can be the case in other games. Very intuitive handling, actually. It surprised me when it stepped out there, it felt very saveable. P8 with that lap as well. Okay, starting around about mid-pack with my one practice lap, let's see how it goes. Green, green, green. The race got underway and it was time to judge my opponent's behaviour. Someone's there, I didn't even know they were there. Already been bounced around a bit, I've got a bit of damage. On your left. Clear left. Car right. Listen about spotter to help as well. The AI were fairly aggressive at the beginning, which made it a little bit frenetic, but the highly active spotter really did help, as I kept mentioning. Ooh, dust works. It's quite a good race so far. All clear. The spotter's so helpful for knowing where the cars are. Oh, he's hit me. Okay, so aggression actually works. They are aggressive. I'm very impressed with the way this feels. I really am. It's uh, Even in the race, it was a bit weird at first. The first lap, everyone was really close together. There was a lot of contact. But once it settled down a bit, they're actually racing really well. The racing felt genuine and had me on the edge of my seat. However, I did have a slight issue with the odd, unpredictable movement from the other cars throwing me off. Eventually, this did catch me out. Oh, no! Watch your left. Clear left. <laughs> that didn't go so well. Bit of damage now. I'm back to P15. There's a few things I'd do if I spent a bit more time with this game, such as turn off the name tags, maybe turn on a virtual mirror that's a bit better than the ones I've got. So there are adjustments, but I'm just basically playing this as it comes out of the box with a few adjustments to the steering and stuff like that. Going on to the final lap, the race culminated in an incredible five-way battle for the lead I mean 12th. Trying to be a bit smarter this lap. On your left. All clear. Watch your right. Still there. Final lap. This is it. Keep left. This is not a safe place to be. Hold your line. Three wide, you're on the left. Still They're giving there. me room though, it's great racing. The AI are actually really good. I'm not gonna lie, I was having a blast. I loved the way that the AI cars pushed me to my limits. They didn't make it easy for me to overtake and were not afraid of making moves themselves, but they also just didn't act as if I wasn't there, moving slightly to give me just enough room when required without just opening the door for me to dive bomb them every time. It was an excellent five laps. That's the checkered flag. Nice, P13 in the end. That was a great wee race.
I'm actually really impressed by that. Like, really, really impressed. And a little bit surprised, to be honest. It's been too long for me to play this for the first time, but um, yeah, th there's a lot to be said for Automo Ballista. There are a couple more things I need to mention quickly before moving on to its successor. The original Automo Ballista is a moddable game, meaning you will never run out of new things to try and the community of racers and mod developers will likely sustain itself for years to come. This may not sound game engine related on the face of it, but trust me it is. Mods are a major aspect of many racing titles, and you could argue that the original R-Factor, which of course also used ISI Motor, was the first true leader in that department. The final thing worth mentioning is a lack of dynamic weather, such as rain and thunderstorms. Again, this is game engine related, so worth mentioning when it comes to the context of this video. Dynamic weather was always a big selling point of the Madness engine, with the Project Cars weather system one of the best ever made in terms of looks and immersion. This was just one of the many push-pull factors that were hotly debated when the announcement of the Switch and game engine was made. And now, I guess it's time to find out more about the successor, Automobilista Ballista 2. We'll start in the same place, the user interface. This game is 10 times better. Everything works as it should, it's modern, it's functional, it's clean. I really can't complain about the UI in any way, it's probably one of the best I've come across, and impressively, it's equally intuitive in virtual reality. Oh yeah, that reminds me. Another thing I didn't mention earlier was VR. Automo Ballista doesn't have it, Automo Ballista 2 does, and it's brilliant. Go and check out our VR vs non-VR video to find out more about that. I matched the car and track to what I'd tried earlier and entered the session. The UI improvements carried over to the setup screen as well. There's a nice little bit of text at the bottom of the screen here that when you highlight a certain part of the setup it tells you what that change will do, so that's pretty cool. I stand by that the UI on this game is fantastic, like it's hard to beat. I hit the circuit and the difference in physics was immediately noticeable. Instantly feels like a different game, but actually I'd say more instantly intuitive as well. I have played this game a few times, whereas I'd never played Automobilista before, so um, there is a slight difference, but yeah, the, the actual physics themselves are, are vastly different. There's a lot less faff with this game, it's just turn it on, don't need to worry about it too much, the only thing you need to get right is your steering rotation. Even with my force feedback strength on 100, the steering just feels a lot lighter than it does in the original game. It's, it, the car's more floaty, it's not necessarily worse, it's just different. You don't have that same weight that you feel with the Automobilista original. Funnily enough, because of course it is the same game, game engine, it does feel a lot more Project Cars-y. The curbs definitely feel better than Project Cars though, a lot more stable. Then I found a few things that let the game down relative to its predecessor. The replay feature was rubbish, to put it mildly. There were far less dynamic angles to choose from, and it was exceedingly unhelpful to use properly. There were a couple more little details missing as well. There is a nice feature on the first AMS where you can load your rival setups. Um, I'm not sure if this has got it. I don't think I can load other people's setups like I can in the first AMS, which is a shame. A quick word on the graphics and sounds. The graphics are smoother and cleaner than the first game, but arguably not much better depending on your opinion. It's clear to see the difference in game engine here within the opposing styles. As for sounds, nothing wrong with them specifically, but I have to say I did prefer the raw feeling I got from the original Automobilista in that department. Next up was the V12 F1 car at Classic Montreal. I decided to try this one in virtual reality for the full immersive experience, and yet again I wasn't disappointed. The visceral nature of the car meant I felt like I was being shaken around over every bump. It was mega. I'm not speaking much in this run just because I'm concentrating with this VR and it's a very intense experience, but it's, it's nice. It's a bit different to AMS 1, but it still feels good. This was when I also began to notice more of the differences in the details in the physics. Again, the car felt lighter and more floaty than it had in Automobilista. I found that under braking, things were slightly easier and more controllable whilst mid-corner I was actually finding this game a little bit harder than the last one. The best way I can think to describe it is that Automobilista was difficult in the right ways compared to real life. It was technically challenging to keep the car on the road, but the feeling was there. Automobilista 2, on the other hand, was difficult in an unrealistic way. The technical intricacies that normally make cars like this tricky to drive have been made easier, such as the braking performance and power application, but the difficulty came from a lack of feeling mid-corner that you wouldn't expect from the real car. Oh, properly wall championed it. This is where the ISI motor nope. really comes into its own for me. It makes the right things challenging and allows you to drive naturally, whereas the Madness physics engine is a challenge because of the lack of natural feeling. I'm dizzy. After suffering from a number of incidents, I did learn how to get the most out of it and ended up breaking the world record, but I did so by exploiting the physics rather than driving in a way that's normally better. Does that make any sense? Hopefully. I also gave it a quick blast in non-VR and it stood up well. 
my only complaint being the graphics felt a little too smooth and soft for me, especially when considering the car I was in. Last up, another AI race around Cascavel. This time I went for the Porsche Carrera Cup and matched the AI difficulty and aggression settings to what I had used in Automobilista. I'm struggling against the AI here compared. I mean, in those touring cars I was slightly quicker than them on a good lap once I got up to speed. Um, whereas just now I'm struggling to actually keep up with them. So I backed out, turned the AI speed down to 95 and jumped straight back into the race. The first lap felt really good. The AI felt more predictable in terms of their movements and reactions. Okay, pretty good so far. The AI seem more consistent in terms of where they're fast and where they're slow. They seem a little bit more natural in terms of that kind of thing, especially on lap one. Oh, no. No, I'm not going to save it. Just about. We'll pretend nothing happened. Sadly, my heroics were short-lipped as I went off at the next corner, so I decided to give it another go. Oh, and the AI's just spun off in front, so the AI have instances of their own, I was nothing to do with that. This Porsche feels really nice to drive, actually. As the race began to calm down, I actually struggled to keep up with the cars in front, even on the reduced difficulty, which forced me to push harder and then make mistakes. Oh, too fast the last corner. Oh, the cars in front have lost it. That wasn't me. <laughs> Ouch. They can carry so much more speed through this long sweeping corner, they seem to have more downforce than me. Might be a setup thing. I think once you go with project cars anyway, once the AI went above a certain difficulty, I think it was 80, they started using custom setups. Nothing I can do for that one. Oh no. I then inevitably stuffed it on its roof and dropped to the back. Oh, great. Oh. Ouch. Another AI's gone off, and they've rejoined right in front of me. And the guy behind's hit him. I do love the fact that the AI go off their own in this. This is fun. All in all, it was a fun race, and I think if you tone down the level appropriately, you should be able to have some nice clean racing with the AI. Any extra things worth mentioning? Well, much like Project Cars, but unlike Automobilista and R-Factor, this game isn't moddable. So if you want custom cars and community-created content, look elsewhere. Time for the verdict. I strongly believe that what we have here are two strong racing games made for slightly different demographics. Neither are perfect, but both have selling points which make them formidable titles. For me, in terms of the driving itself, Automobilista on the ISI motor just edges it. It feels more genuine and gives you more feedback, whilst Automobilista 2 feels slightly vague and unpredictable. That being said, the advantages that come with the switch to the Madness engine are probably more tangible advantages for a mass market of racing game fans. The user interface, weather, and virtual reality integration are massive plus points for most consumers, and the driving itself isn't a game breaker. It's still nice, it's still fun. To be honest, I see Automobilista 2 as a bit of a bridge between casual gamers and sim racers. You can still drive all of these fantastic cars and learn how to get the most out of them, and you can do this without needing all of the skills of a pro racing driver, at the cost of some of that genuine feeling through the wheel. So, does one game engine truly trump the other? Honestly, there isn't a right or wrong answer to that because it depends on who you ask. If one was better than the other in most departments, then things would be different, but that really isn't the case here. Both have flaws, both have their strengths, but at the end of the day, both are worth a shot. Sorry if the conclusion was a bit boring, but I genuinely feel like I couldn't really have said anything else based on my experience. What do you guys think? Am I wrong? Let us know in the comments below. Until next time, keep it pinned, thanks for watching, have a great day.